Okay, hello my friend. Uh, hopefully you are doing great. So today I'm going to send you a very interesting uh, lesson, a very interesting topic that is about for loop. And I will tell you about a variable naming convention and constant as well. Uh, I don't want to put in the lesson too, too much. So I will add some more information about what is the variable naming convention and what's the a constant and how to declare. So let's go with our main purpose today. This is for loop. So if you look at the contents here, you may confuse yourself, especially if you are a beginner in Java. So let's do a little by little. So what is for loop? What if the for loop is a loop and each just loop when the conditional is two. That means we have uh, one, two, three thing here between the double curly bracket here, you see, and the four keyword here. And in the middle, we have something like the condition. And if the con condition is two, it will excuse something. Okay. So let's try to understand this condition first. Go back to our IDE. So you create a new package. Let's right click on the source and create a new package with the name lesson three. Enter and you create a new class with the name for loop. Enter here. And you declare a main method like before. Yeah. So let I declare a for loop here. I put for the for keyword here. Enter. And then we will have a party inside here, you see, and then we enter. Now, put something in the middle. We have two semicolon. Put two semicolons first, one, two. And then you will see something like this. Let me print out something here, like in love. And let me try to execute this main method run so you will see we have in loop in loop in loop until i click to terminate the program or the program itself will be have something like stop overflow when the memory is out of memory or something like that so why this happen because we don't have any gatekeeper here so you can imagine yourself that if you go to go through a, a gate and there is no gatekeeper, no one checked you. So that means you can go freely. So the same thing happened here because we don't have any, you know, any condition here. So that means this party in the loop just is executed forever till I terminate it or the system itself got stuck overflow. So if I put something false here in the middle, you will see the IDE itself is very smart. It will say something that unreachable statement. Why? Because this gatekeeper not allowing any people go through the gate. That means false. Only the condition is only false. So that means we don't have any chance to skew the code in the body here. But if I put something true here, the same thing will be happen like before. We will got something we call that the infinity love. That means this is love forever, this one. So you see the condition, we have two value, two and false. So you make sure that it is not true. Yeah, it is not only true, right? Because when it is only true, we will got the infinity loop. And you want to make sure something like if the condition here falls, you need to make sure that you understand the code in the body will never be executed. Okay. Or even you don't put anything here. We got the infinity loop before. So that is about condition. Okay. Condition you can imagine yourself as something like a gatekeeper. And it will check 
is to check something true or false before doing something. Okay? So just go back to our slide. So we have uh, init value. So, and the conditional chain trigger. So why do we need them? Because you already know that we have a condition here and we want to trigger something. That means if the condition still true, we want to excuse something till the conditional is false, right? So we need uh, in this value here. For example, you put something like ENT, that means an integer, that means stock equal zero. You want to stock equal zero here and you call it the init value. But if you execute this again, because the condition is now, you see, nothing here. So we got an infinity loop again, right? And we say something that I want to trigger something like if it's still true, I will execute. So let's put something like when the stock and I want to increase the init value every single time after I run this one. So if you run this one and you increase, you run this one, you increase. But in this case, when you even when you increase, but you have nothing like condition here. So we got the infinity loop again. So we need to put something like this will skew when the stock less than five. So that means when zero is it less than five? Okay, and it's do it again. Uh, it will do it. And then after this code executed, it will increase to one. One is still less than five, and it will to four. One, two, three, four, and then four increase to five. That means five is not less than five. So this means this club will be not executed. So try to put something inside like I want to print out the stock value here and I run it. So I got zero, one, two, three, four. Why don't we have, uh, why didn't I have five? Because five is not less than five. So this, this condition is not satisfied. So that means this code is not executed. Okay, so let's go back to the slide here and I will explain in detail a little more. So you go here and you see, just remind again, the body inside is executed one day, uh, if the condition is true, if it is false, we are not going to execute this one. And in this value, I think that um, you already saw that this value is just only one time at the beginning. That means we init something here and we never visit to it again, right? And the condition before the cost block is executed, it will be checked for the conditional chain trigger, it should be after. That means it will be not executed before, but it will be after, you see, in this value, is it satisfied and then execute. And then after that, we change something and then check the condition. If true, if you do this one, if false, if you not. Okay, so we have a flow chart here and you can see, this means we have something like initialization expression. This is the init value. And then we have the condition. If false, we will loop terminate. That means we will execute something out of the loop here. Okay. But if it is true, the for loop party will be executed. And then it will update the expression. That means if you update based on the conditional chain trigger here. After that, it will compare to the tag condition. If false, it will loop terminate. And if it is true, it will do again. So we have a loop here. This is 
the loop. Okay? So, you need to make sure you trigger a correct logic. Okay? So, let's go to a real uh, story here and we will try to uh, analyze a little for you to understand. For example, the dad say that the dad say to the son that if you forget to do homework three times a week, you can't play outside in the weekend. Okay? And that means the init tells you that the son's speed test will be zero, right? At the beginning time, the son the son's uh mistake will be zero. And zero is still less than three here, so that's mean can play outside. Excuse the court body, that's mean the sun can play outside. Okay? So if the sun gets mid test one, two, and three, but in the three, that's mean three is not less than three, so cannot play outside. So in this case, the sun was the changer, right? The sun was the changer because the sun triggered the mistake, increasing the mistake, okay? And in this case, we have the desk in like a church, the gatekeeper who want to see whether it's method in less than three or not, right? And that means the desk will uh, decide whether the sun can go outside to play or not. In otherwise, in the courting contest, that means we skill the court body or not. So what if the mistake is always zero? That means the sun, the, the sun have, have no mistakes. So we got the infinity loop. So just come back here. If you are not increase this one, right? You put something like empty here. That means the stock will be zero forever. And that means zero will be less than five forever. So you need to make sure you control the conditional change and to make sure your logic is working. Okay, if you run this one, you will face infinity loop again. You see zero, zero, zero. Okay. So just put the code back. So that's it for loop. Let me summary a little. We use the for loop with the four keyword and then inside the per curly bracket here, we have something like the first, that is the init value. The second is the conditional. And the last one will be the conditional changer. Okay, the, the conditional changer. And inside is the core body that we want to execute. Okay, so let's try to put something like variable name. Uh, variable naming convention. So let me toss uh, quickly because it's not hard. So if you declare some variable, so you need to focus two things. The first thing, the variable itself has a meaning. That's when other developer, other member in your team read your code and make sure they can understand what is the meaning for that variable. Do not Put something like in to the i equal zero. They view not now what the i, what is the i stands for, right? So you can see something like uh, int uh, the mass mistest mass mistest. Let me see. Allowed equal three. That means we can understand that, oh yeah, the mass mistakes allow is, let me see, there's some typo, is three. And that means three is now has a meaning itself and someone read your code, we call it the readability code, readability, and people can understand. Okay, that's it, the first rule. The second rule that's it about the way you name here. So basically we will have uh, something like Camo case and snack case. So what are they? So camo case that you name something with 
the first letter is in normal letter. It's not upper letter. Okay, it's not in uppercase. Okay, it's in just a normal letter here. You see, it's not like an uppercase like that for a variable. And then after uh, any words, I mean, a uh, complete work like KMO and the next work will be uppercase. You see, KMO case. You cannot name something like this. This is bad. Something like KMO case equal uh, something like equal three. This is bad for variable. We will have something like this for class name later, but for example, you see why is it bad? Because it starts with an uppercase. And then you see it's not camel case. Something should be eight here, right? So you should put C here, a normal here, camel case. So you know the camel? What's the camel? Let me show you. Uh, here. Here is a perfect image for you. So you see, this is a case mode here, you see. The same thing happened here when you name in something. It's the head, and then you see something here in the middle. I don't know how to call this one. So it's the head, so it's lower, and then now it's go higher, lower, higher, lower. Okay, so we call it the camo, camo case. So what's it for snake gate? Snack gate is something like this. Into the mass mistet allowed equal three. You can see like a snack, like a snack, like right, like a snack. So we call it snack case. So snack gate we often see in Python. And we will use camel case in Java. So that mean you can use Snake in Java as well. But you know, um, we are talking about command things in something. So command things in Java, we use camel case and in Python, we use Snake case. Okay. So just delete this one and just keep something like integer mass mistake allow is three here. Okay. And then let's put something like into the um, mistake number equal zero. That's the init value, right? And I want to print something like uh, play outside because the mistake is uh, mistake number. Let me correct it to print format here. The mistake number. So when the mistake numbers is less than the mass mistakes are uh, allows, I will execute this one. That means I can play outside. And I will trigger something because if I don't trigger something, that means my mistake will be forever zero and I will face an infinity loop again. So I will increase my mistake. So in the real life, no one want to increase the mistake if they, they know that's, that is a mistake, right? But we are talking in the coding context here, we need to increase the mistake number, and then we can trigger some logic here. Okay, so just try to run your program, your program again. You see? Uh, Play outside because, oh, let me try to do something like I want to enter to the new life and run again. So play outside because the mistake is zero, mistake is one, mistake is two. But we don't have a three here because three is not less than three, right? So ask yourself, okay, before we go in for debugging, I want to introduce for you a constant. So you see the mass mistakes allowed here is not changed in the runtime in our coding. And to declare something is not going to be changed in future with your constant. 
So how do you constant? So one of the way and a very common way you do that, you do the keyword final here, and then you specify the data type in the case the integer, and we specify the name for that constant. And the naming convention for constant that you put on in uppercase and we put underscore between words like must mistake allowed equal three. This is the naming convention all are uppercase and between them we have the underscore so you can Try anything, but I mean here the convention that is something that's very common in coding program work. And if you do something, you know, um, very different with other people, that is it's okay as long as your team is uh, has a convention for your team and your team agree with that. That is okay. But the problem, if you know, time by time you got a bad habit and then you work for another team, you cannot adapt. So you need to know some common thing here. So here is a constant. And then I will put here, right? You see, if I will try to reassign the constant, I will face an error again. It's, we cannot reassign an, uh, a constant like this equal four. We will face an error because cannot assign a value to final variable because this is something constant like something like final string uh final integer um seven equal seven right seven equal seven is something like um two and we don't want to change it okay so that's it about constant so just come back to our for loop and try to debug because I want to show you how to debug your uh, your program. So you want to ask yourself that what is the final mistake number value? So based on what I have just explained for you, you can ensure yourself that the number value, the, the final number value for mistake number is, is three, right? But I want to see myself in the coding so I will put something here. You see, when I click here, we have a checkpoint for debug. And how to debug? You see the bug here, the bug icon here? You click here and you will see something like you will go to debug mode, right? You click on run. Here you see something different here. You see, we have a mistake number is zero, you see? and we execute here right and we go to the next step and the mistake number is now zero and we go to the next step you see it's now increased to one and one is still less than three so if you do something like this we do again two three you see when three is will be out of the follow -up, it will be out of the follow up here. And then that means the final value for miss, you see here, mass mistake allow it three, not two. Even you see something in the console is two, but the final value is three. And that trigger the logic here is not two anymore. So that means you go outside. Okay. If I put something here, so out of the loop and I run again here. Uh, stop and rerun. You see, we have a two, a zero, one, two, and then we out of the loop. That means we will execute the rest code after the loop here. So we will see something out of the loop. Okay. So today, you know how to work with the for loop and you understand uh what you need to pay attention when you work with the follow-up right and you know how to name a variable correctly based on a common convention how to declare a constant and 
you can practice yourself, I think. So see you from the next tutorial and bye for now.